Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you may or may not be aware, there's been a lot of controversy and conflict surrounding the channel, and it's been really interesting for me to watch how that's unfolded both in the YouTube world and also inside of me. I've realized a lot of different things, a lot I'm still kind of figuring it out, but I wanted to share with you some insights and some problems that I've had using conflict as a means of motivation as opposed to compassion. When I first released that video uh, announcing the debunking red pill extremism videos, I really was not prepared for all of the hate that it got. I really wasn't. I didn't necessarily think that anybody outside of my subscriber base would be seeing it. So I was not prepared for the controversy, the reaction videos to see people talking about me. All of that was a complete surprise. And so I've had to adapt. Now, when it was all going down, I was sort of presented with this, this choice of to what degree am I going to engage in all of this? And that was honestly not a, an obvious thing for me to do. The first part was obvious when there was just like the name calling and like the really triggered people who were really hyper emotional. I knew I wasn't going to engage with them because I mean, there's just absolutely nothing to be gained. If you've got like a child taunting an adult, you don't, you know, <laughs> start taunting the child back. You just sort of let them be a child. And when somebody is like in the midst of like, you know, their pain body has been activated and they're really stressed and emotional, upset, that's not a time to have a rational discussion. So that layer of like uh, controversy or criticism that was leveled at me, that, that was really easy to ignore. I, I, I never even considered going there. Then there's the second layer of criticism where you think, all right, well, some of this criticism would be valid, except that it doesn't apply to me. It's just a lot of straw man arguments. And some of it was still quite emotional, but I thought, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll respond to those. And then there were criticisms that were just straight up valid. People could see where I was coming from, but they're like, hey, you could have done this better, or this was a little bit confusing. Maybe you should have said it more like this. And those criticisms were good. And so I pondered for a couple of days on how to respond or what to do. And I wrote out a script. I covered all of the basic kind of criticisms that had been leveled at me. And I was like, all right, this feels good because it seems to me that a lot of this has been caused by confusion. I'll just clear the air. I'll just correct a whole bunch of these uh, misconceptions about me and that should be the end of it. So I released that and I felt really good. I liked the response that it got and I was like, right, cool. We've kind of weathered the storm, so to speak, and put this to rest. Even after I released that video though, this still felt like there was a lot of unfinished business. And that was to be expected because I still hadn't released anything that was actually specific. And so I felt extremely motivated. I was like, all right, people want to know exactly what am I talking about? So I'll release a video. And I worked really hard. I wrote the script, I filmed, I edited, and I released it. And I will say that I was absolutely expecting, perhaps not rationally or consciously, but emotionally, I was expecting an even stronger backlash to my video that contained specific points debunking red pill extremism to my initial video. I was like, right, I've, I've actually got in there and I've, I've started to argue against something. All right, let's do it. I'm ready for the battle. I'm ready for the fight. The exact opposite happened. After I released that video, as far as I know, nobody in the wider community has even sort of acknowledged it or talked about any of the points that I made. It was met with complete radio silence and it's had the effect of really kind of depressing me because I felt like there was this momentum moving forward. I was like, right, people want to argue with me. People don't like my point of view, but heck, I'm ready to defend it. Let's do it. And then for it to sort of fall completely flat or on deaf ears, it sort of felt like I was running and running and running, expecting to slam into this, this strong opposing force at some point. And so I was bracing myself, but in the place where that strong object that was meant to absorb my impact was, there was just absolutely nothing. And it left me feeling, I don't know, just lost or, or pointless. Like the whole thing kind of meant nothing. And that was an extremely worrying feeling because my intention is and always has been to help people. And the fact that nobody was arguing against me doesn't mean that the work was any less significant. I still very much think that what I've created and what I intend to create will help a lot of people. But that was a very humbling moment because I could see at that point with how disappointed I was, how much conflict 
and the desire to defend myself had been motivating my actions. It had almost like taken me over. Now, that's not how I want to live. I don't want to be motivated by conflict. I don't want to have constant spikes in adrenaline kicking in that that fight or flight reflex in order to motivate me every time somebody disagrees with me. What I want is a calm, stable existence where I don't have these ups and downs. And so I did a lot of self-reflection. I noticed inside myself how much the conflict had been motivating me and how it led me to this dead end. And it was really humbling. And I thought, okay, well, no more. And I got through the couple of days of, you know, feeling depressed and kind of got myself back to baseline again. And I was starting to feel good. Then a couple of days ago, somebody sent me the link to a video where people were talking about me. It was the Red Man group. And inwardly, as I was just listening, I just was just groaning. I was like, oh God, you know, here we go again. I just got myself back to normal, back to baseline. And here the conflict was just being reactivated again. And I felt no motivation to engage. I was like, oh, I, I, I don't want to do this again. I didn't listen to the whole video, but I did make some notes as they were going. And I was like, all right, well, that's wrong. That's wrong. And I was like, okay, I guess I need to do another video sort of pointing out all these straw man arguments and whatever. But inwardly, I was just hating the process. And I was kind of hating myself. Like, dude, you don't want to do this. Why, why are you doing this? Just, just, just drop the whole thing. I know that I'd put this invitation out there to Richard to have a conversation with him. But my plan was, you know, since everybody was just debating like straw men, they didn't know exactly what I was going to be debunking was, well, let me get a couple of videos out first, you know, give me a couple of months and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. That's this red pill extremism. And then we can have this conversation. We've got something specific to talk about. I'm very familiar with conflict. I've dealt with it all my life. I've got extremely strong boundaries and I know how to defend myself, but it's not fun. Just because you can do it doesn't mean that it's good for you. It puts you into a very specific frame of mind, which as I've grown older, I don't want to enter into that frame of mind anymore. It does not feel good. And as I was listening to this, um, this discussion from these guys in the red man group, one of them was like, step into the arena, bitches. Like if you disagree and I was like, Oh, see, that's, that's what it would be like is it would be a conflict. You know, it wouldn't be two people disagreeing with each other and having a respectful kind of dialogue you know, you can tell from the manner which they're speaking, like they're like making fun of my accent and, and whatever, th this is going to be an argument and straight up, I'm not really interested in having arguments. And I was looking down the list of all the things that I would talk about in a video or that I would bring up in a live conversation. Like if we were having a debate, I just realized that it's, it's all ego and that's, and I'm sorry, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking inside of myself. It's my ego. Like, why do I care? You know, do I care? Like, what is this inside myself that wants to defend myself against these, you know, accusations? You know, why is that something that is motivating me? Why can't I just completely ignore it? It's not like I care what the individual members of the red man group think about me. You know, most of them, I don't even know. I haven't heard of them or come across their work. You know, I don't watch this show. So why is it that I felt the need to defend myself. And I realized that it's not about them. It's this kind of archetype that sort of exists in my psyche of like the audience member. It's like, well, I wouldn't be defending myself for the sake of, you know, convincing those people, but this archetype audience, I, I want them to understand the truth of what's going on. But as I've reflected on that, that's a completely irrational idea. Most people who already think like me, they will have watched that podcast discussion and they would have seen exactly what I've seen. So what's the point in, in me pointing out to somebody or, or what they already know? I think that the other thing that makes this really hard for my ego to just sort of let it go is that it's difficult to see false information put out there when you could so easily correct it. You're like, all right, well, they think this, that's wrong. So let me just correct them. Let me just put out the truth. But 
you know, that's what my ego says, but rationally, I know that's not going to be the case because I've done that already. I already released a video. <laughs> Did it make any difference at all? I think for people who want to be right and they want to have arguments, and I'm just talking generally here, I'm not talking specifically, it doesn't really matter what you say. They just want to keep having that argument. And so as much as my ego wants to get in there and, and have that conflict, have that argument, really what purpose is it serving? And so it brought about just more feelings of depression because I was like, well, I'm in a no win situation here because if I respond to the specific points and I have to be very careful in making this video that I don't actually accidentally say one of the specific, you know, things in there, because the moment that I, I bite and I take that bait, then it's going to start that whole process again. It's like, trying to put out a fire using petrol, you know, it's only going to make it bigger. So if I start responding to individual things, then, then they'll probably respond back or some other people will respond back. And then the conflict gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And as somebody who is sick of conflict and I don't want that energy existing inside of myself, it's not how I want to live my life. I'm like, well, I, that actually doesn't sound like a good option to me. I don't want to do that. There's no winning for me if I take that route. So what's my other option? Well, the other option is to just walk away, to just ignore it. But I know what the consequences of that'll be. It'll be a bunch of people saying, Alexander Grace, he's got nothing to say. He couldn't hack it in an argument. And I wish I was a bigger man, but it bothers me. You know, it's humbling to admit this, but it bothers me that people will think that. And I'm like, well, that's not true. I want to get in there and prove them wrong. You know, you want to throw down? I could absolutely throw down. <laughs> but I don't want to. And so the entire experience has been extremely humbling because I would like to think of myself as somebody who doesn't care what other people think. That is certainly what I aspire to be. And yet why am I considering either responding or walking away in terms of how other people are going to perceive it? That's what's been humbling as I've realized that how other people are viewing this situation is dictating how I behave and how I respond way, way more than I would ideally like it to. When I'm faced with a situation like this, I often ask myself, well, how would an Ayn Rand hero respond? How would John Galt or Francisco D'Ancona or Howard Rourke, you know, what would they do in this situation? Would they just sort of exist inside their own reality and not consider anybody else? Or would they be a second hander and constantly be changing their behavior to suit others? One of my favorite lines in her books comes from this conflict between Howard Rourke, the hero, and Ellsworth Tui, the villain. And Ellsworth has been just fucking with Howard, just constantly ruining his career, screwing him over left, right, and center. And when the two of them finally meet, Ellsworth says to him, you know, if you like, you can tell me what you think of me. And Ellsworth is like, yeah, I've totally got you, man. I must have really gotten under your skin. You know, if you like, you can just let at me. And Howard Rourke, it doesn't even register emotionally. He's like, but I don't think of you. That right there, that is how I would like to be. You've got all these people, name calling, straw man arguments, whatever. I want to be like, I don't think of you. But I still do, at least a little bit. So bringing this back to me, I want to use this situation to learn and to grow. And I think that the most important thing that I've learned, aside from how my ego can still get caught up in this kind of thing, more work to do on that front, is the effect that conflict has on its ability to motivate me. Because absolutely, when I was under attack and the desire like that, uh, what would you call it, like self-defense, that desire to just survive, that, that survival instinct, that's what I'm looking for, that kicks in. You're like, right, let's do it, you know? And it wasn't difficult for me to start penning scripts and making videos ready to defend myself. This is, I imagine, why people use conflict as a motivator. There's MIGTO, Red Pill, you know, extremist guys out there who perpetually feel in danger. You know, their view of women is that they're absolutely coming to get them. There's this conspiracy against men and against them almost personally. And you can tell that it's that conflict that's motivating their videos and gets them to churn out like two, three videos a day sometimes because conflict is a very effective means of motivation. I felt it inside myself, but it wasn't a good feeling. I, you know, I didn't go out and seek the conflict. It came and found me. 
And it was very effective, but in that sense, that's why I think it's extremely dangerous because the analogy that I've sort of come up with in my mind is that using conflict as a means of motivating myself to create content is like burning fossil fuels. You know, it's very effective and it's, it's quite cheap, but ultimately it's going to pollute the atmosphere and kill us all. If I allow myself to be motivated by conflict and I'm constantly just defending myself and buying into the sort of um, criticisms against me, then I'm just going to poison my body. I'm going to poison my psyche. I'm going to constantly kind of feel under attack. What I want is to be more like geothermal energy or solar panels, something that that gives me motivation, gives me energy, but at a more like stable, calm, you know, and ultimately renewable sort of source of energy and motivation. The only other thing that makes this a little bit complicated is that I don't know to what degree I feel obligated to take action that might not be the best for me because I'm, I'm now seeing that very much what's best for me is to just ignore all the haters and just focus on the content that I want to create. Just me, do me, stop looking at other people. That's what's ultimately spiritually going to be better for me. It's going to be nice and calm, but I can see that there would be a benefit to me engaging in like live debates and arguments with some of these people because you know, they've got their ideas and I do have alternative ideas. And I think it would be good for people to see those ideas clash. You know, there'd be some conflict, some friction, and people hopefully will watch that kind of thing. And then it'll gain clarity. You know, friction does create clarity. So when they see that, they're like, okay, now that I've seen both points of view independently, now that I've seen them clash together, I have a better idea of where I sit. I completely understand that perspective, but for me, I just don't think that the personal cost is worth it. As people on this channel know, I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson, and I heard him say that when he has an adversarial, like argumentative interview with somebody, it takes him a couple of days to recover. And that's what conflict does is it riles you up and you feel like your survival, you know, it's irrational, but probably has some evolutionary kind of uh, purpose behind it, but you feel like you're under attack and that does something to the chemicals inside your body. I don't want to bring those up for myself. I, that's not a pleasant sort of experience, but I don't think that we necessarily need to lose any opportunity for a debate over ideas, but it just needs to be done in a context of respect. And I'm not seeing any respect out there. This isn't me whining just as a very basic observation. If you watch that podcast from the red man group, they don't respect me. You know, that's fine. They don't have to, but I just don't think that there's any benefit in engaging in a debate with people who don't respect me. Where's the possibility for any kind of uh, meaningful dialogue and actual discussion, giving the other person room to explore their ideas. If anything, it'll just go straight into kind of attacks and criticisms. And that is a missed opportunity, but ultimately I have no control over that. As always, I completely remain open to being wrong about that. I might be mistaken or uh, circumstances might change. If they do, I'll reconsider what I'm thinking. But my thoughts on this whole thing and how to handle it, they're evolving. This is completely new to me. I've never been like, I don't know, like a semi-public kind of figure and had people talk about me and then think wow, that has nothing to do with me. Like, I don't know how to handle this kind of situation. I'm learning as I go. So if there ever is any kind of debate, I, I will keep you guys informed, but it's, I, the whole idea just leaves a bad taste in my mouth at the moment. In more positive news, I hope everyone's seen the most recent video that we put out, which is the return of red pill interviews, just pure data collection, but this time with American women. Back in November, I started talking with one of my Patreon subscribers. This is an idea that I wanted to do for a long time was to create an American version of red pill interviews so that we can compare and contrast the answers with Australian girls, see if there's any meaningful kind of difference. Uh, I'm really happy with the partnership that I've created. I think the guy is absolutely awesome. He's doing an amazing job. I don't know how frequently we'll be able to upload, but make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you'll be informed when the next next video comes out. We hope to get through as many of the topics as possible. I'm not sure how much his schedule is going to permit him to be able to work on this, but if you saw the video, you can see that the quality is absolutely exceptional. So there's a lot to be excited about. If you found this discussion on conflict being a good motivator interesting, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any advice for me, as long as it's respectful, I'm happy to take it on. If you like this style of video, if you enjoyed watching this, hit that like button. 
And if you want to support me, please consider making a pledge on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you again next time.